two of the two of your three, uh, losses have come against dual threat quarterbacks, and you struggled against the run um, in, in 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 the running game in both those times. What gives you the belief that you know things can be different facing this team? Um, in in yeah. Yeah, thanks for that reminder, John. On that, I appreciate that. Um, but they're a good team, you know. Um, they just beat a team that had beaten them twice, uh, two out of three times, and they beat them. And and uh, you know, they, they're to me one of the more complete teams in the playoffs. Well coached, um, you know, extremely talented. So uh, we got to play our best game. What what struggles did you see? I, I mean. What concerns did you see in those two games against, you know, uh, Kansas City and, and and Arizona when they they they, they ran for more than 200 yards and um, just do do you feel that those those corrections can be made going into this week? Well, that's what we're working on. So we're going to go practice, John, in a, in a few hours here, and we're going to work on that. Fair. And last thing, um, what do you, what do you make of John Harbaugh and maybe what you saw? of him as, as a potential future head coach back when you were in Philly. And he did kind of trash talk you yesterday. Just you, he complimented your wife, um, but he, but he said, you married, uh, you married out of your league. Yeah. Well, I take that as a compliment. Um, as far as John, uh, yeah, I mean, he, uh, you know, you could always tell he, he had great leadership ability and, and, uh, comes from a football family. So he had the football acumen and intelligence that usually comes with growing up around the game. And, uh, and I know he's just being around John, like I was, is he's very close to his family and, and, uh, and they share a lot of the kind of things that come up for coaches. And, and so I think that's, that was always kind of cool to, to watch. And, and so a lot of respect for, for coach Harbaugh. Thanks Sean. There, I can't hear it. whoever's talking. I can't hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. It's Sal. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. You guys got me? Yeah. Okay, sorry, coach. Sorry about that. Hey, um, I know you evaluated the uh, 2018 quarterback class. You know, I, I can't hear you. Okay. Sal, you're like very, very low volume. Okay. Go ahead. All right. We'll, we'll go to Jay here. Sal, we'll come back to you. Hey, Sean, it's Jay with the Buffalo News. Um, the uh, the video last week of the guys dancing at practice, uh, everybody loved it. Uh, to me, though, it sort of showed just a, a way that maybe they're trying to stay loose at, at a time when, you know, the pressure of these games week to week gets, gets bigger. Um, to you, was that an example of just how those guys are, are trying to do just that, just stay loose uh, in, in this moment? Uh, yeah, I mean, I just I think the key is just to be themselves, you know, and you can sit here and talk about those things or you can be yourself and enjoy the moment and, and get yourself ready to play. And, and I think just, you know, one of the things that's special about our group is that they just go through their process every week and, and they, they enjoy being around one another. And, you know, whether it was dancing to the music or, or a snowball fight a few weeks ago, um, you know, I think that's that's pretty cool to watch. Uh, those guys have fun and while getting themselves as professionals ready to play. You, uh, you're, you're fond of saying that when guys come to Buffalo, you want them to be the best version of themselves. But <clears throat> Paul yesterday said that that's an easy thing for a coach to say. It's not as easy, though, to actually follow through and create that um, culture or that community. How uh, have you done that where that, that, you know, those guys can feel like themselves in this building? Well, we try and, uh, you know, I would say, Jay, it's probably a couple of things. I think, number one, we try and uh, lay down very clear expectations uh, and then allow them to do their thing, allow them to, to be themselves uh, within within those boundaries, if you will. And, and then I also think it comes back to people. When you get the right people uh, in the building, uh, whether it's the training room, the coaching, the coaching staff, you know, uh, along with the players, I think that helps build the environment. Uh, whereby we're all aligned on the same page and everybody understands, um, you know, how we do things. And, and so within that, guys can come in and, and be themselves in, in, in an environment, hopefully, that starts with 
a healthy amount of, uh, of, of mutual respect for one another. Thank you. Sure. Hey, Sean, um, you, you guys brought in Devonta Freeman to the practice squad. What did you see in him and what, what could he add in that room? Yeah, I mean, I had the, the, uh, the I guess, the unfortunate opportunity to go against him in the NFC South for a number of years. So I, I had a front row seat to witness what he's capable of doing. Um, so, you know, bringing him into the running back room, um, I think it was a good move and uh, by, by Brandon and and uh, he adds to, to what we have and, and we're trying to get him up to speed as quickly as possible here. And yeah, on top of that, what are the challenges for guys like Devonta and Kenny Stills coming in here late, late in the program here and getting them up to speed enough to where they may be able to contribute at some point this season? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a lot in a short amount of time, a lot of information to digest in a short amount of time to, you know, to get them ready to go. And that's kind of the biggest challenge. Thanks, Sean. Yeah. Hey, Sean, it's Sal. I'm sorry about that. I hope you can hear me a lot better now. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, yeah thank you. Um, I know you evaluated the entire 2018 quarterback class. Obviously, Josh was a part of that and Lamar and even at Baker now playing this weekend. I know you like a good underdog story, a guy that's had his work to work up. I mean, um, what did you learn about these guys, both of them in the evaluation process and how cool is it to see these guys who I would say were pretty polarizing coming out of the draft to be able to have this success, you know, together as a group coming, you know, this weekend. Yeah, I think it's, it's, uh, <clears throat> it's really uh, been fun to watch their careers unfold. And uh, we were high on, on, on all of them. And uh, we've got a lot of respect certainly now for, for Lamar and, and uh, you know, they're running a, a, uh, I think Greg Roman does a great job in, in the offense he's running and uh, they're very talented. And, and so, uh, you know, they bring in Des Bryant uh, in the middle part of the year to, um, you know, and we've gone up against Des a number of times uh, over the course of my career and a lot of respect for him as well. So um, yeah, both, you know, all these, all these quarterbacks, the, the three that you mentioned, uh, you know, just been fun to watch their careers take shape. Thanks coach. Sure. Hey, Sean, Adam Benini. Uh, Sal stole part of my thunder there, but more specific to Lamar. Um, if you can think back, you know, you obviously got the guy you wanted that made sense. And it's more than, you know, played out that way with Josh. Um, but there were so many questions about Lamar Jackson at that time. Very legitimate people even questioning whether he could play the quarterback position effectively in the NFL. Do you remember what you kind of thought of him back then? And did you foresee him becoming what he is now. Yeah, very, it was very high on him. Um, and and I, I'm sure like Baltimore, you, they had a vision for, for Lamar. We had a vision for Josh. And, and I think that's the key. And, and that's um, why it's cool to watch these players um, uh, in their, in their careers flourish like they have. And that's also, I think a result of and a credit to Baltimore and the environment that coach Harbaugh has developed there. And, and, and I would say the same thing for us. Uh, Josh so um, again it's I think it's great for the league when you have quarterbacks young quarterbacks playing like these two and, and then uh, and then um, Sal mentioned uh, Baker as well like like these like these these guys are including uh, on the AFC side Patrick as well with Mahomes there so uh, it's great for the league thanks Sean appreciate it yeah sure. all right coach we're going to switch to some Baltimore national media we're going to start here with Martenzi Hi, Sean. Martenzi Johnson with ESPN. Kind of piggybacking off of that, uh, Lamar and Josh have both been pretty successful running and throwing the ball the past couple of years. Um, what do you think that says about the ability for dual threat quarterbacks to not only be successful in the regular season, but now with both of them winning playoff games uh, to be able to take their teams deep into the playoffs? Well, yeah, I mean, I, th I think it's somewhat a result of, of the college systems that we're seeing, right? More and more of these quarterbacks are mobile coming out of college. And, and so uh, I do think there's an added, an added dimension to their game when they are mobile. Uh, uh, so, uh, you know, the defenses have gotten so fast, uh, but at the same time, they've had to counter what the offenses are doing with these mobile quarterbacks. So uh, it's a continual, um, you know, cat and mouse game, I guess, in terms of developing and, and having the right roster. So uh, yeah, it's whether it's regular season or postseason, it's they're a handful. You know, these guys are headaches that, that can do both. Thank you. Sure. 
Sean, um, when you go against the Ravens, uh, how, how much do you, you know, just have to prepare for the aggressiveness defensively and, and how much Wink Martindale is known to love blitzing, known to apply uh, pressure at, you know, any and all times? How, how difficult is that to prepare for and, and how much do you kind of have to keep that in mind? Yeah, I mean, he does a great job. Uh, he's, he's been at it for a number of years and, and uh, you know, they came in here last year and, and uh I thought did a great job against us defensively. And, uh, and so um, I think, you know, Wink does, he's creative with the blitzes uh, on all downs and, uh, you know, they've got corners that can cover and, and, uh, and guys inside that can rush that are difference makers. So um, very veteran group overall, including, including Wink. Hey Sean, when you when you look at your whole three year run with uh, with Josh Allen, um, what were you most excited about when he came in, and then where has he maybe even exceeded your expectations? Well, is it you know we I think you're excited anytime you draft a quarterback high that you think you certainly have a vision for, and, and you feel like he has the ability to become the the face of the of the franchise and uh, and lead a team uh, to successful seasons and years and sustained success at some point. Uh, but you also know that that's down the road because of the development that has to take place typically and, uh, and some of the growing pains that you have to go through. And, and so I think Josh has done a phenomenal job developing. He's worked extremely hard. Uh, he's, he's well, he's loved by his teammates and uh, he respects the game. And, and so I think that's a great foundation. I'm Jimena Lugo La Torre from Ravens Spanish Radio. Question, what are your thoughts about Governor Andrew Cuomo letting the fans enjoy the game this Saturday with a negative test? Well, we certainly appreciate the opportunity to have fans. I know there's been a lot of hard work and hands um, in this that have gone on. It's gone on for some time and certainly appreciate his, uh, his willingness to grant us fans so we hope everyone, uh, again, can, can uh, continue to stay as healthy as possible and that for our entire world, not just our community, but our entire world, that we can find a way to continue to uh, mitigate the risk and, and get this thing taken care of here. Thank you. Sure. Hi, Sean. Uh, I know you talked about the defense a little bit, but, but the Ravens defense um, has invested draft picks and salary cap space pretty heavily in, in their cornerbacks. When you look at that secondary, what do you see and, and what does the talent there maybe allow that defense to, to do? Yeah, I mean, you're right. They, they, uh, they've got guys on the perimeter that can cover and cover at a high level. Um, and, and like you said, they've invested a lot of capital, draft capital, salary cap space, trade capital, whatever, in, in that position. And, and I thought those guys did a really good job last year against us, and, and it'll be a big challenge for us this year. This year. Hey, Sean, this is uh, Jonas. Uh, I, I don't know if you guys, if you personally saw Stefan Diggs at Maryland, but he's obviously a local guy here. Um, I know you played against him, I think, in 2016 uh, with Carolina. Uh, how far has he come since since those early days? And I guess what does that just, you know, speak about his development and, and his willingness to get better? Yeah, I think you really embrace this, Jonas, that growth mindset that we talk about here. And, and uh he, he's determined to, to grow and get better every day. Um, he loves, he's got a great passion to compete and, and great passion for the game of football. And, and he's a great teammate. So, um, you know, I think it's, it's been um, a blessing for us. Um, and it's, it's very clear that he is developed over, over the course of his career, which is, which is a credit to him and the people that, that he puts around him that are going to, you know, continue to push him and hold him accountable. 